Good afternoon. I'm Orlando Ramirez, editor of La Prensa, and here we are for another edition of Inlandia Literary Journeys. Today we have with us Juan Delgado, poet, professor, uh, and he is uh, the author of a, a new book called Vital Signs, which uh, is a collection of his work with photos from Thomas McGovern. Um, the book is just out, and Juan is going to share some poems with us today. Um, Juan, just to start off, you're from the area? Yes. Uh, you've been living here for how long now? Geez, all my life, just about. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So what's the first poem you're going to? I'm going to read Crown After Crown, and thank you, Orlando, for inviting me, and you know I'm a big fan of your work. Uh, so thank you. it's an honor just to be here. Um, crown After Crown, and this is dedicated to Ernest Silva, who is uh, one of the elders in Serrano tribe, and I admire his kind of fortitude for keeping, trying to keep the language alive, the Serrano language alive. So Crown After Crown. Goat heads bask in their thorns and roar on spoked wheels, sunburn falling to the roadside and spreading their seeds. We too cling to our poor, soil-rooted dreams, the return of our lands. St. Augustine will not smother us again. We have our own crown of thistles. We are a proud, stubborn people, dirty cheek, and in spring the yellow, the lemon yellow flowers of our goat heads bloom. And I'm going to read another poem, another short poem, entitled um, For George. And I'm going to, uh, this is connected to, or actually based on um, a, a thing that happened when I was raising my little brother. I come from a l large Latino family, and I was designated my young brother to raise. And uh, one of the things was, you know, to just take care of him. So this poem's a little bit about that and feeling a little guilty at the, as I got older um, just because of a thing I didn't do. Um, when he was little. For Jorge, you appear wearing your only white shirt, weighing the perfect dirt clot in your hand, ready to dash off to the nearest field of foxtails. Why did mother always call my name first when she wanted you to get going for school? How many times did I have to wash your face? And what a fuss you were on Sunday mornings. Once you came to me, clenching your hand, raising your fist, look, you said, my palm is on fire, ant bites. You had carried a clod across the field and through our alley, finding the perfect wall to explode your grenade. Next time, I'll run cool water over the burning and wake the whole house to your pain, I promise. Let's see, I'm gonna to try to find my pages here. Um, uh, let's see, the next poem uh, is dedicated to my daughters called Skipping, for Anna and Clara. You saw, the world fetch you, you saw the world fetch your daughters a rope. The dusk of their chalk drawings on the sidewalk jumped in while their ponytails loosened. On a staircase dulled by a weak light, they would stop in mid-step and giggle for no obvious reason before vanishing. Their whole street slid off the refrigerator magnet. Like stars at dawn, their, pe their peanut butter peanut butter fingerprints receded into a whirlpool's black door. Often, he would walk to the yard's ed edge far enough to, to where he could see them, make their unsteady turns on their stingrays, spotting the dead crabgrass rising above their spokes like sparks. They squinted between their handlebars and pumped their pedals faster, flying back with a ruckus of hungry jays at dusk. And let's see, um, this is a poem that's kind of dedicated to uh, Larry Kramer, who was a trickster. He would li you would never know he was telling the truth or lying. So maybe this is what made him a great poet. Deep in the backwoods of him, his tutored and idle tongue strolled, pinching off a fact and spinning it out like an empty seed. His art, his art had no belly for the all too common truth the man standing beside his own life, a flagpole waiting for a special day. His tongues dark as cheap ink feast until they could wiggle out words from a circling net. He rested on the mud of his dreams, comfy, hearing the rain gossip. Um, this is entitled El Tigre, Mar El Tigre Market. Um, and it's connected to one of Tom's uh, photographs, um, El Tigre Market. 
As apparent as the rest, the asphalt cracks are crowded with yellow weeds, and the rust goes beyond its bleeding color and the lot's rails, battered by cars, cast larger bars by noon. On one side of the market, someone painted a roll of flower pots, hanging geraniums for the locals who must now go across town. As parent as the rest, El Tigre walks upright, wears a tiny sombrero and serape, and pushes a grocery cart full of food. His painted stripes are starting to flake off like the bounty he wields for the families drifting into the parking lot off of 3rd Street and next to the train station still waiting to be retrofitted for the big one. One more? Yeah. Okay. One more to see. What do I do? Um, uh, let's see. For 72. I'll do the singer Amparo Ochoa. This is for the, um, the singer Amparo Ochoa. The singer. Amparo draws in faces, children running after her touring van's back window. They drift off, heads lowered, hands on their knees, catching their breath, seeing her face framed behind the van's speeding scratch glass. Quintana la voz. The velvet curtains of her ex-lover's windows were yanked from their clips and sewed into a dress she carries, floating through the street, a gown, a growing parade of faces behind her flag. On stage, she sings barefooted, offering up her half-naked voice. In the barrio, pans of grease stop hissing when one of her songs walks by. A girl clutches her cure dry leaves from the Pantanica de Santa Barbara. She passes a swing clothesline. The wet corners of the bed, bed sheet snap to vamos juntos. The silk of corn rises like her voice. Amparo, once Amparo had to pawn her voice, and Pepe, the pound owner, the pawn shop owner placed it in a glass case next to her fountain pen, longing for the taste of imported ink and silver uh, and a silver necklace made out of coins hammered out flat, holding the dented face of her country's once beloved hero, Gintin and La Voz. Great. Well, thank you, Juan. Uh, those are great poems. Uh, this is Juan Delgado, of course, poet. Uh, and he is the author of Vital Signs, a book he did with photographs from uh, Thomas McGovern. Um, this has been in Landia Literary Journeys. I'm Orlando Ramirez. Uh, be sure to read the column in the Press Enterprise every Tuesday. Please visit the website uh, at pe.com is the, one of the direct ways to get there. And uh, we will see you again next week. Thank you. <laughs>